don't actually need pronouns in conversation. We really don't need them. Um, I'd experiment with it if I were you and just and just try it out because um, there are ways that uh, it's, I, I think it's just a kinder thing to do and just m more respectful of people getting to identify themselves um, themselves without us doing it for them. So that's sort of what that last poem was about, a little bit. Um, I have to read on this subject right now. Um, and then these, so these are just my last two poems. And um, if you requested something that I didn't read and you're, you, you, know, you feel so sad about it, um, I'm going to be out at the merch table after and you can have whatever that's on and you can just have it for free or whatever. There, we were doing that last night because I felt bad. <laughs> okay. Um, my friend Sonia Renee, does anybody know who Sonia Renee is? She's an amazing spoken word artist. And um, I've been trying to work on this poem that uh, was about touring with her for 30 days. And Sonia's a black woman. And um, the amount of things that came up in 30 days that were smack in my face, my white privilege, um, it just was astounding. And, uh, and this, it, it's been heavy on my mind, um, heavy on my mind, really fearful with what could have potentially happened with the elections. But also, um, Sonia's mother passed away recently. And um, when, she, uh, when she died, um, the city wasn't even gonna do an autopsy on her mother because she was an older black woman. And Sonia, mourning and grieving the loss of her mother, had to spend hours on the phone with the city making them and insisting that they do an autopsy for her mother because they're just like, well, it's an older black woman who died. Um, and that would never, ever fucking happen to a white woman, a white person in this country. Um, I wrote this poem years ago for a show called White Lies. And I live in Boulder, Colorado, which um, tends to be a very wealthy, uh, white privileged town. And we were doing, uh, the, that was what made up the majority of our audience. And um, yeah, so I'm just gonna read this poem. We're on our way back to school from gymnastics class. And only in Boulder, Colorado, the kids are singing John Lennon's Imagine at the back of the bus when Jesse stops herself in adverse, searches her arm across the aisle like a sunbeam, tucks at the edge of my shirt and says, Andrea, what does hatred mean? Jesse's five years old. Anything I say, she's gonna believe, but I realize I don't know the answer. I'm not sure what hatred means. I could guess and say it's the opposite of love. I could guess and say Jesse hatred is why there were nothing but white faces on our private school bus, but Jesse isn't white yet. Go ahead and ask her. What color are you, Jesse? Well, it looks like I'm pink. Shane thinks he's orange. Skylar says she's tan. Rhett says he's see-through. See, you can see how my veins are blue, but they're red when I bleed. And I wish there was no such thing as springtime. Because I don't trust the machines that will one day be planting seeds in these gardens, teaching them some people are flowers, some people are weeds. Rip the weeds by the roots, ignore their screams, tilt your own face to the sun, take what you want. You are the chosen one. Sitting Bull said white people are liars and thieves. I want to tell Jesse he was wrong. I want to tell her we didn't come like a time bomb. Gunpowder on our breath, teeth built like bullets. That this land didn't weep when our feet first mercilessly hit the ground. I don't want to say we drowned and maimed the children. Sliced long strips of their skin for bridal reins. I don't want to say the moon was slain. The constellations dispersed like shrapnel. Jesse mothers killed their babies, then killed themselves when they saw our faces on the horizon. And all that we left was a trail of tears. But if I have to say that, I want to say our boat stopped there. I want to say the waves never saw the sails of slave ships, never heard the sound of chain links, but Jesse, think slaughterhouse, think people branded, suffocating, foaming at the mouth. Could you imagine what kind of pain you would have to endure to throw yourself overboard 2,000 miles out to sea lungs gratefully, exchanging breath for salt water gratefully, trading life for death? Can you imagine being chained to your dead daughter? How many days would it take you to stop searching her hands for lifelines, to stop searching her wrists for a pulse, for just some sign of time turning backwards to what you knew? People could never do things like this. And Jesse, this is not just a picture of our history, not just a picture of our past. We have been hundreds of years measuring the size of our hearts for the size of our fists, erecting our bliss on the broken backs of dark skin. The present is far from gift-wrapped. Ask New Orleans. Ask mothers in the Bronx chasing rats of the babies. 
cribs, ask the fathers of the kids whose lives we exchange for cheap gas, ask our prisons why jail bars always come in black, ask Afghanistan, Palestine, Iraq, ask the woman in Thailand whose cancer builds our laptops, ask the Mexican man working in a field fertilized by nerve gas, ask his daughter when she is born without fingers or hands to pray with, ask me how long I could keep going with this list, y'all, God might be watching, but we are not, you are white, Jesse. There are bodies dangling from the limbs of your family tree. Our people pull people from the soil like weeds. Breathe in our story. Force yourself to hold it in your lungs so you can hear our hymn song beneath white sheets. So you can feel your own finger on the trigger of the gun. Feel yourself fire as he shouts. Do not look away as bullet enters hoodie, enters heartbeat. Now breathe out. This is where we come from. This is still where we are when another boy is slain in our backyards and no one comes to take away that rope gun. Don't you think it's time 